Out to Vegas, Rich Waltz, Aaron Murray, and A.J. Ross. Have the call. Enjoy the game. Across the sport of college football, senior nights are always emotional. And at UNLV tonight, for Lexington Thomas and the Rebels, not just senior nights, but rivalry nights. And that rival comes from the north, Nevada and UNLV. They play for the Fremont Cannon. And the Cannon has belonged to Nevada the last two years. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray. A.J. Ross will join us shortly. It is a rivalry, and at times, this rivalry can get nasty. It get a little testy, a little fun on the field, maybe a couple jabs here and there, but this is what football is. You throw out the records. I don't care. You're winning, you're losing, playing well, playing bad. These type of games, a little extras added to it. It's a lot of fun to watch. Nevada is one of the best stories of the year. They had three wins last year, win this game, and they've got eight this year. It's a tough thing for a new coach and Jay Norvell. Get the team to buy into what you're selling offensively, defensively. You turn on the tape year two. They bought in. They're playing great defensively. Offensively, the air raid attack. And this is why they're having so, so much success. This is why they have a chance to win eight games. And for a guy like Ty Ganji, he was here on the lean times, and it's great to see him enjoy and really drive this team now. Well, and it's good to see him healthy, too, because when he's healthy, he's not only a great thrower, Rich, he has the ability to take off with his legs. He's very agile. He's dynamic. He keeps defenses honest. You want a quarterback who can do it with his legs? UNLV's quarterback is finally healthy. Armani Rogers is a big man. He can throw it, but... More often than not, he's going to run it. He does. He has, he's a cannon for an arm, but his ability to take off and run really opens up this offense, helps out with Lexington Thomas, helps out with the receiver. So I'm excited to see what he can do tonight. Oh, you said Thomas. His nickname is Lightning. Uh, he is Lightning. I tell you what, you give him any kind of crease from a defense, he's going to take it. He's going to hit it. It's not just three, four, five yards. They need these home runs tonight. If they're going to want to stay in this ball game, He's going to need another 50, 60, 70 yard touchdown to continue his great season. Jay Norvell, year two, and his second crack at UNLV in this rivalry game. They won last year up in Reno. And Tony Sanchez, in his fourth season, is the head coach at UNLV. He's got a healthy Armani Rodgers, and his team has played well the last two weeks. They upset San Diego State two weeks ago. They had Hawaii beaten into the third, but collapsed late over on the islands. Yeah, they're playing better. We talk about it. They're buying into this system, too, from the UNLV side. They're getting better and better. Most importantly, Rich, they're healthy right now. That's why you're seeing them play better football. Good, strong kick by Ramiz Ahmed. And so UNLV gets the football first from their 25-yard line. Summon the cow. A little Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And there he is, all six foot five, 225 pounds of him. And I was out there pregame, Rich, watching him throw, watch him move around. He looks comfortable. He's getting healthier and healthier each and every week. I want to see if he can win this game with his arms. We know what he can do with his legs, but if he can throw the ball accurately down the field, it's a new dynamic to this offense. Lexington Thomas. It's a good run defense of Nevada. The offense for UNLV. Some weapons on the outside, including Brandon Presley. Yeah, we talk about, obviously, new quarterback and more, more of a runner in Armani Rodgers, but he is getting more comfortable as a pocket passer. So these receivers, like Brandon Presley on the outside, they're going to get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So they got to take advantage of it. Second down and eight. Thomas, nice stop and start, but he's planted at the 32. They'll bring up third down and five. Nevada's defense really good right now, and Malik Reed has made the transition from defensive end to linebacker. Oh, it's been seamless for him, and they're going to move him all over the place. He's going to be defensive end. He may stand up at times in third down situations, according to the coaching staff. He's a guy as an offense. You've got to be aware of him, because if he gets one-on-one -on -one with a tackle or a guard, you got to double team him. He's too good at getting after the quarterback. On third down, Rogers first carry and he's tripped up. That's Lucas Weber. 
the senior linebacker coming up to make the play and well short of the first down. And we're seeing it early on right now in this first position for UNLV. The game plan, they want to make this game go by quicker. They want to shorten it up by running the football, keep the clock going. They can do that now with Armani Rodgers, and Nevada knows that as well. They're going to stack the box to stop the run. Is that because they don't have the firepower of Nevada? No, they don't at all, and they realize that, and they just want to make sure they can keep this game close into the fourth quarter. Good, strong kick. Fair catch called for and made there by Caleb Fossum. And back comes the cow. Our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Ty Ganji was banged up in the middle of the season, but he's healthy. And this offense is rolling. Oh, and he's been on a tear during this four-game win streak right now. Eight touchdowns, one pick. And he said it best, he's healthy right now because when he can move around in the pocket, extend plays, plenty of talent at the receiving position, even at the running back, it's tough to cover those guys for five, six seconds down the field when he's running around. First play for the Wolfpack. Ganji will pull it and throw it. Lobs it down the middle, and it's caught there. Romeo dubs. Inside Rebel territory to the 38-yard line. That's a great job. He actually had two receivers open right there. Mannix was wide open in the slot. The safety's bit. He went to the outside, just a double post. Great job. Shen off the DB, wants to grab his arm. Powers right through it to get the big play to start this game off. That's 41 yards from Ganji to Dubs. A lot of talent on the outside for Nevada. Quick throw there into traffic. Is it hit? It's incomplete. Almost intercepted. Jericho Flowers almost ended up with it. It was intended for McLean Mannix. And one of the keys for UNLV's defense is to lock up these talented slot receivers. You see it right there. They're going to hug these guys close to the line of scrimmage about four or five yards. Don't let them get a good start. Ty Ganji loves going to his talented receivers on the inside. Mannix and Fossum. And you saw the ball clearly pressed against the turf and not in control. Second down, 10. First carry for Kelton Moore, and he busts loose and moves to the 10, moves to the five-yard line and knocked out of bounds there. Big game and a great sequence for that offensive line. Well, look at this side of the offensive line right here. All the big guys getting a couple pullers out in front. Center and guard, great job finding their guys down the field. And then Kel Moore, patient on the outside, let the block set up for him, and then take advantage with the big run. Anthony Palomares, the left guard, Sean Kreps, the center. And now, first and goal for the five. Kelton Moore in motion. Ganji, corner throw, caught, touchdown. That's Mannix. Yeah, that's a great throw right there. One-on-one -on -one coverage. He recognizes the defense. And we talk about it. Mannix and Fossum, very talented guys in the slot. It's just an easy corner out. You're going to high-low the corner. And Mannix does a great job getting on top, get a little move at the top of his route and wide open in the back corner to get six points on the board. Great touch on that touchdown. Of course, great touch on the throw to Romeo Dubs that really unlocked that drive. Ahmed for the extra point, and in this rivalry game, Nevada on the road and on top. Ty Ganji is sharp, and it's 7 0. Thanksgiving weekend in Las Vegas. 7 0, Nevada on top of UNLV. Let's head down to A.J. Ross. A.J.? Hey there, Rich. You guys touched on this uh, record stats. All that goes completely out the window when these two teams compete for the Fremont Canton. We're talking about pride tradition on the line. This rivalry dates back to 1969. Let's take a look at the Go RVing road trip back. Tonight is the fourth, 44th time, I should say. Nevada and UNLV have met for this rivalry matchup, competing for the largest and most expensive rivalry trophy. The Fremont Canton weighs roughly 545 pounds and cost around 10,000 bucks to build 40 years ago. Now, winner of tonight's matchup will get to hold the cannon until next year and paint it their school's colors.
AJ, that's, a pres that's the biggest rivalry trophy going in college football. The Fremont Cannon. UNLV. Evan Owens. Good coverage there by Nevada. Aaron Murray put a pen to paper and came up with his keys to the game. What you got? And we talked about for UNLV to start to show off, create some kind of explosive play down the field. This isn't a defense in Nevada you can just continue to chop away at. And then defensively for Nevada, can you contain Armani Rogers, force him to be a pocket quarterback tonight? The wrinkle here for UNLV, obviously they need to get it done on the ground with Rogers and Lexington Thomas, but Nevada's been very good lately against the run, and this is Thomas with nowhere to go. Yeah, he's blasted right about the 17-yard line. The market at the 18, Malik Reed and Gabe Sewell made the stop. No, it's a very talented defense, first off, but when you know the ball's gonna get run, the safeties are downhill, the linebackers are downhill, they're filling in the gaps fast. At some point, you gotta utilize the play-action pass and maybe take a shot down the field. Look at the improvement there. In the last uh, three seasons, quick pop there. It's caught by Presley trying to get outside. That looks like a face mask, and it is. Flag comes from way down the field. Presley with the catch. Nice run after the catch, and they're going to add 15 yards to this play. Personal foul, face mask, number 23, defense. 15 yards to be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, it's a great call by the ref right there. And those are actually the plays, talking with the coaching staff yesterday for UNLV, the quick hitters from Armani Rogers. They know he can throw it deep. He can throw the dagger route, 18-yard in route. He can throw the post ball. Can he throw a hitch? Can he throw a slant on time? That's something that he's been working on, even while he was banged up middle of the season. 42-yard line. Rogers has a strong arm. Flushed. This is where he's dangerous. Sore foot and all, midfield, up the sideline. Wow, he's moving well. Asani Rufus caught him. First down at the Nevada 42. And this is when he's dangerous right here. When he gets through his reads, plenty of time in the pocket. Great job. And then when he takes off, and I tell you what, he's impressive to look at. He's big, tall, physical, long strides. And as a defense, you got to take proper angles right there. Not a great job by Nevada. Fired outside, Presley with the catch, escapes one, but not two. And he's brought down there by Asani Rufus. This is a good defensive secondary for Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator for Nevada. Daniel Brown and Jamon Dotson on the corners, Baber and Rufus, and Nephi Sewell in the safety spots. Their talent's on the outside. And what I want to see, you're seeing a little bit off coverage from the corners. And you see a little bit more press. See if our money can be more accurate against main coverage. <laughs> Lexington Thomas maybe won. Sam Hammond made the stop for Nevada. And the key is Lexington Thomas, can he get going? And when you add Armani Rogers into the mix and hit the threat of him running, the threat of Armani Rogers throwing it deep down the field, it's going to give Lexington those opportunities we saw in the pregame. His ability to hit those 40, 50, 60 yard big play home runs. Possibly four down territory here. It's third down and four. Rodgers flushed and fires it too hard. Overthrows Darren Woods. And now you're looking at fourth down and four. If you try a field goal here, you're looking at about a 50 yarder. And that might be a little bit out of the range of Evan Pantels. It's just a three-man rush right here. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. And I think that's clean. It was right at the waist. It wasn't below the waist on time. And, and I agree going for this right now. Let him go through his reads. Armani Rogers go through his reads. Nothing there. And this is the benefit of having him at quarterback. He can get you four or five. Nothing's open. And it looks like the is going to bring the pressure, though. Blitz comes. Rodgers in trouble. Firing the sideline. Overthrowing Presley. And it's incomplete. And fourth down and four turns into a Nevada ball. And that's the man-to-man -man coverage on the outside that I want to see from this defense all night. Make Armani Rodgers accurate down the football field. If you give him time, he can pick you apart. But great defense. These guys are doing a great job to start it off. Tight man-to-man -man coverage. One of the best defenses in the Mountain West.
College Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Verizon. Get the gift you want on the network you deserve. By Chick-fil-A Catering. It's the little things that take the stress out of the holidays. And by Go RVing. Find your way. Go RVing. All right, a couple things here. That was Jay Norvell's running back group, and that was their Thanksgiving. And did you see the game they had on in the room there? That was uh, the Thanksgiving game, Colorado State at Air Force. Catch there by McLean Mannix. Mannix, who caught the touchdown pass, has a gain of four. Right to the 40 yard line. All right, continuing our Chick fil A lineups offensively. Romeo Dubs has emerged as a weapon. He's just a freshman. Yeah, and he's gained more and more confidence. First time he touched the ball this season, took it for a touch on a punt return, getting better and better these last couple games. 225 yards, a couple touchdowns, really coming into his own this season. Little toss there, and Jackson Kincaid is hit. And stops at the 42 yard line. Bailey Lalongi made the stop for UNLV. Now, the Rebels defense has been a work in progress. Tim Skipper hoping that his group can get it rolling. Evan Austria in the strong safety spot, gonna have to have a good night. It's gonna be both safeties, because we talk about this team offensively from Nevada, the air raid attack. It's a little bit of run, too. There's a lot more run involved than, say, Washington State. So they're gonna have to be the eyes in the backfield, and then they gotta cover Fossum. They gotta cover Mannix, two of the most talented slot receivers in the Mountain West. It's a lot to ask for. Eye discipline's gonna be the key for these safeties. Toa Tawa at running back. On his third down and four, Ganji with a blitz comes, dumps it off. Man, it's a juggling catch across midfield. He's to the 40 and bounced out of bounds at the 37. McLean Maddox streaking across the middle and somehow found the handle on that. That's a great job by Mannix. Find the seam, just a little shallow route. They're going to clear the left side of the field. Vertical routes by the receivers up top, and Mannix doing a great job. And for a quarterback, it's tough to see, man, it's about 5'9". To be able to locate him only three yards, four yards behind the line of scrimmage is a tough task. That's why you saw the ball coming a little hot there. That's why you have trouble locating me at times. Straight ahead, tumbling there. To Otawa. Our Bud Light inside tracks. Last four games for Ganji. Comfortable and healthy. The key is his health. Because you turn on the film, it's not just sitting in the pocket. We know we can do that. We've seen it so far tonight. But his ability to get, get outside the pocket, extend plays, it's also why you're seeing that accuracy right around the mid-60s. Second down five. Tawa, the freshman, he has really taken things over. You know, we focus on Ganji in his last four games. How about this guy? Of course, his brother Vi was a, a and still is a Wolfpack legend. But this freshman's had a, an enormous breakthrough. And his role keeps getting bigger and bigger, too, as well. 29 carries last week. 29 carries. And we talk about this being an air raid attack. You think air raid, you think 50, 60 throws. But when you got a running back like this, big, strong, physical, and make guys miss, you're going to run the ball a little bit more. Third down, two. Let's see if they run it here. Rebels will blitz. Ganji has to unload it. Fires it up. And it is just behind Elijah Cooks. Yeah, good pressure and a nice gamble by Tim Skipper, the defensive coordinator. Oh, and Tim Skipper told us yesterday, you're going to see right here, look at all the guys blitzing. Skipper said, wait, we're not going to sit back and let them pick us apart. We're going to be the aggressors. We're going to come after this offense. We've seen it a couple times with some covered zero blitzes, man blitzes. And I like this call right now. You got a big running back in the backfield. See so if you can get him going downhill. Maybe even a play action roll your quarterback out. On fourth and two, Nevada has the lead in the empty backfield, and another blitz comes, little dump pass, caught there. Cole Turner, touchdown Nevada. <laughs> 24 yards, and this time Ganji with the blitz coming unloaded early. And once again, UNLV decides to turn up the heat on a fourth and short situation. And when you play man to man, you get all these crossing patterns. You see the defenders get mixed up a little bit. It's called natural picks. It's not design, it's just natural when you have crossing routes and guys coming out of the backfield. 
Defenders usually tend to trip over each other a little bit, and that's why you saw an open receiver for that touchdown. Not just an open receiver, an open receiver that had not caught a pass all year long until that one. Ty Ganji and Nevada, a fast start in this rivalry game. 14-0 start for the Wolfpack here in Las Vegas. Our top crew gets ready to, they may be waking up right now because 8 a.m. Eastern, they'll get you ready for another busy day of the NFL, that other pregame show right here on CBS Sports Network. Ty Ganji talking it over. He's got a, a real good uh, group of talented wide receivers, a creative offensive coordinator, and Matt Mummy. And this Nevada football team is really humming right now. Oh, it's full throw. It starts with Matt Mummy, though. This offense, he's a great offense coordinator, knows how to dissect these defenses and put together an awesome game plan. Right now, if you're UNLV, you've been blown out a few times this year. And this is a rivalry game, and it looks like UNLV is going to pull the trigger on Max Gillum, who is the throwing quarterback. Uh, much more of a thrower than Armani Rogers, and Gillum, the sophomore, is coming in. It, it, this is a little interesting to me. I thought Armani had some really good moments those first couple of possessions, running the football, a couple of good passes here and there, especially the quick, the quick hitches. I would much rather see get through the first quarter a little bit, get him into a groove. He really hasn't played a ton in the past couple months. Gillum on a handoff, Thomas around the outside, shoved out of bounds. Nephi Sewell made the hit. Here's the comparison between the two. Now look, the record isn't great for Gillum. Hasn't had a, a great supporting cast. He, he is the thrower of the two. I think Armani, you, you, you watch him in warm-ups. Armani definitely has more arm talent. It's just the accuracy, it's the timing with his feet that he needs to continue to work on. That's why you just want to get him more reps in games. Gillum with a little pitch there. Xavier Campbell, and he's right at the 35-yard line. Now, look, you're right about Rodgers and maybe not being in game shape to play a whole game. Good lead option there. So we expected to see Gillum. I don't know that we expected to see him this early, but I think the, the Rebels planned to play Max in this ball game. Blitz comes, dumps it off. Caught there, Campbell again, cuts back, across the 40, but he is just shy of the first down. And my, I guess, issue with the whole thing is, is, is Armani Rogers is your future. He's your guy going forward in this offseason into next season. And then what he missed this year, and the coaches have told us yesterday, is reps. His ability to go out there and demonstrate that he can take that next step throwing the football you take him out of game so early right now, he's not getting those opportunities to learn and to progress as a thrower. Kill him on the handoff, Lexington Thomas. And Nevada's run defense has done a nice job of keeping Thomas bottled up. And that's not easy. I mean, in his career here, Lexington Thomas has had some enormous games. Well, you go to this defense, though, with, with the 3-3-5. Three, three, you have the ability with a lot of DBs, a lot of speed on the field, so you see how these guys, they're, they're able to see, dissect it, see it's a run, and then boom, they're downhill in order to stop a speedy Lexington Thomas. Campbell's back in there behind Gillum, who rolls to his left, fires Giovanni Faolo, the tight end, with the catch, and we rejoin A.J. Ross. A.J.? Yeah, Rich, and speaking with offensive coordinator Barney Cotton, he says Armani and Max are actually friends. They've supported one another both on and off the field with Rodgers recovering from that foot injury, and you, in fact, you might say they were destined to play with one another at one point, both committing to Cal before their journeys brought them here to UNLV. Yeah, you're right, A.J., really ironic. You know, Gillum actually went to Cal, Rogers committed, they knew each other, and here they are sharing the duties in this rivalry game. Caleb Metter made the stop for Nevada, and that's going to be a loss of yardage, and it's third down and nine. What do you dial up if you're Barney Cotton? Yeah, you, first of all, you got to make sure you protect it, because right now Nevada, we, we've seen it this season, a ton of sacks on that side of the football, 31 sacks, and they're not doing it just blitzing five, six guys. 
they're getting pressure with three or four guys. So you got to first make sure walk up at the line of scrimmage and make sure you cross that line of scrimmage to get the first down. Three-man rush, and that little dunk pass is in and out of the hands of Lexington Thomas. And as hot as Nevada's offense is, UNLV is going to have to give the ball back to them down two scores early. And I think right there, Gillum felt the pressure a little bit. Didn't sack him, but just enough to make him a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket to get off his reads and have to get the ball checked down to his running back. Lexington Thomas would have had to make about three or four guys miss in order to get that first down. Hayes Hicken. And it's going to take a kick back towards the playing field. And it's down right at the 21 yard line. Nevada's had two touches. They've got two touchdowns. It's 14 nothing. It's awesome. It's like a state championship for us uh, playing UNLV. You know, it's pretty awesome to be out here and, and experience this rivalry with them. It just means a lot to, to me. I appreciate it means a lot to the other guys on the team. And that can means a lot to the city. We, that's one thing we're working on getting back. It's the Fremont Cannon. You win the trophy, which is the largest rivalry trophy. You get to paint it your color. Yeah, and both teams hoping for Nevada blue. You know, if they want to paint it red. Right now, it's been a great start for Nevada so far offensively. Great first two possessions. Kelton Moore in motion. Ganji fires it, finds Moore, has a blocker, but that play is blown up. Dalton Baker over there to make the play along with Demetrius Gibbs. Keys to the game on this side of the ball. And right now, we saw with the post route, a couple places slot receivers as well. Utilize the middle of the field with your slot receivers, Mannix and Fossum, and then defensively, you want to somehow make this Nevada team throw the ball the entire time. If you can keep them in third and long situations, that gives this defense the best way to have success. Movement and contact and a flag, and that's going against UNLV. Kulo Waske, big nose tackle with the movement. Defense offsides, number 54, defense. Get to the neutral zone, got a reaction for the offense. Five yard penalty, main second down. Oskay is actually 94, but we don't have a 54 on that side of the ball, so I'm, I'm assuming it was him. There he is. The junior out of Mesa, Arizona. To a tower in the game for Nevada. Another middle shot, another catch. Caleb Fossum. And Aaron Murray just. Re-emphasized, throw some balls over the middle, and they've had success already. Well, it's the play action pass, and then they pull the guard on top of that. So you're gonna see all the linebackers, all look at these guys up there, biting on the play action, then it's easy pickings for a quarterback. Get up there, middle of the field's vacant, and you got a slot receiver run right across there for you. Nice and friendly showing his numbers. This is Tawa spinning. And he lands at the 48-yard line. Now, you and I saw Ty Ganji and Nevada against Boise State, and they darn near won that football game. He looks like a completely different quarterback tonight. He's healthy. Well, it's tough with any kind of lower body injury. He had a, a thigh contusion in the middle of the season. So he has to, he's protecting it a little bit, and then we talk about his ability to run. It's his natural instinct. And when you take that part of a game out of him, it's a little tough just to sit back in the pocket. But he's doing a heck of a job so far tonight. Play action, fake, fires it deep and too deep. Mannix trying to fight through the traffic, got through there, but Ganji overshot him. And it's funny, we were talking at the commercial about Ty Ganji and just giving his receivers an opportunity. We saw on the corner route for the touchdown, the post route to start the game, let your guys who are very talented go up there and catch it. The first inaccurate pass we've seen. Great job, great play design. They've run a couple screens so far this game to the outside to the receivers. Right there, you just got to put it right in his chest, let him catch it like a punt, and then get in the end zone for the touchdown. Third down and four. Three-man front for UNLV. Little inside handoff there. Tawa with a flag down, has the first down into Rebel territory at the 46. It looks like defensive offsides once again. So a free play, they took advantage of it, got the first down anyways. Jay Norvell, his second season. 
31 years as an assistant coach, both in college football and the NFL. Offsides, number 54, defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is first down. That's the second time. Right there, right over the center. That's Waske. And a great job by the center right there, making sure he gets the ball snapped while he's still in the neutral zone. Final minute, first quarter, Nevada's third drive. That one deflected and incomplete. Caleb Fossum was the intended receiver. Roger Mann, who plays that buck position for UNLV, got a hand on it. That's a great job getting up there. We, they've seen enough of those passes to the slot receiver so far tonight. Great job disengaging from the tackle, getting his hands up there and tipping the ball. Now UNLV has suffered through a, 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 an awful defensive year, but the last couple weeks they've played much better. They're starting to force turnovers. They had two picks at Hawaii. They've got five turnovers, five picks in the last three weeks. So they've been able to make some plays, but not here. Big man going. Kelton Moore to the 10, to the house. Touchdown, Nevada. Forty six yards and Nevada has scored on every possession here in the first quarter. It's a great job by the tight end. I want to see right over here. First of all, offense line doing a great job and then a great kick out right there. We give his running back just enough room. That's number 48, 49, Trey Carter Wells doing a great job. Got to love when you see a tight end getting in there, getting nasty and open up a big gaping hole for his running back. Extra point is no good. Big and gaping is apt, not only for this hole, but for this lead. And Kelton Moore goes the distance. Nevada, a three touchdown lead. We told you at the outset, Nevada is hot. They've won four straight. It's their longest win streak since 2012. We didn't know they were this hot. Three possessions, three touchdowns, three long drives. And right now, a 20 to nothing lead. Well, sometimes, and we, we mentioned it with Tim Skipper, defense coordinator for UNLV, said he was going to bring the heat defensively. Sometimes when you bring too many guys, yeah, they're going to hit some big home runs on you. And we've seen that so far in those first three possessions. It's like Max Gillum's going to get another drive here. First three possessions. Look at this, Aaron Murray. And then look at the time to 118, 3, 3, 11, and then 46 seconds. It's the big post. It's the corner. It's the big runs. The offense line doing a great job up front, run protecting and then pass protecting as well. Armani Rogers started at quarterback. This is Gillum bouncing it outside, losing the football. Still on the turf. Still loose. And Nevada's got it. What a disastrous first quarter for UNLV. Nephi Sewell recovers, and the Rebels can't do anything right. I think Gillum just got a little excited right there. Tries to change hands. Obviously, you want the ball in your left hand if you're going to the left. But not being as natural of a running runner as a running back is or receiver, kind of fumbles it there as he's making the switch. Sometimes you just got to hold on to it if you're Gillum. But Jay Norvell has to feel good about that. Offense is rolling, and you get a great turnover. And once again, inside the 20-yard line, have all the momentum on your side. And inside the Verizon red zone, you see Nevada right around national average. 63% of the time, they stick it in the end zone. 100% of the time tonight. Blitz, Ganji throw, little center screen in the middle there. And that's Trey Carter Wells, who, as you described, had a great block on that last touchdown run by Kelton Moore. No gain on the play. And second down and 10. Gillum on a headset right now as UNLV searching for answers. Gillum has had two series. And Armani Rogers has had two series as well. Second down, 10. 
firing it out to the outside. Ball's loose. It was incomplete. Not a lateral. McLean Mannix couldn't hold it. Dalton Baker made the hit. Third down and 10 when we get back. What a start in this rivalry game. The Wolfpack of Nevada rolling on the road. Brent Stover in New York, third-ranked Notre Dame trailing in the third to USC until Dexter Williams busts loose. 52-yard touchdown run. They lead 14-10 in the third. Rich Waltz, Aaron Murray, and A.J. Ross. Brent Stover, thank you for that. We kept an eye on that USC-Notre Dame game, and we'll keep you up to speed as well as the night goes along. Some really good ball games still to come. Nevada with the football in an enormous lead right now, 20 to nothing, starting a second quarter. Ty Ganji has been brilliant. The defense of Nevada has been outstanding, and that's a six-yard carry there. This is interesting right now. We talk about rivalry games. I thought for a second they may have gone for it on fourth down. But good job right there. You know, if you get put in a bad situation, bad first three series, offense turns it over inside the red zone, and they hold strong right there. You can see it does get a little windy out here in the desert and this stadium is out in the desert. It's away from the strip about a 20 minute drive from the UNLV campus. It's 29 yard attempts by Ramiz Ahmed the senior. And Ahmed knocks it through. Well the first three scores were long drives but the fumble by Max Gillum opened the door for three more. And the Rebels will get the football back when we return. It's a new league, and it offers new opportunities. And Tuesday night, right here in Las Vegas, 8 Eastern, CBS Sports Network is live. It's the inaugural Alliance of American Football Quarterback Draft. Franchises will select who will lead their teams under center. And you know what? This is the site of the championship game. Aaron Murray, who may be the first guy selected in that draft, just down on the field. What were you daydreaming about? Yeah, I, was, I was mean mugging there. I didn't look at, no, I looked so scary. My mom's like, always oh, smile. Why are you always angry? Spent a lot of money on those pearly whites. So Atlanta has a team. Yes. It sounds like you may be running that team. Well, not running the team, but running the offense. I'll be a GM and coach, you know? Yeah. A little Jackie Moon action. And this is uh, this is the site of the championship game. There will not be a franchise here, but, but the championship game will be played right here. And like you said, come Tuesday is going to be the quarterback draft. All these teams get the pick, so fingers crossed. Hopefully Atlanta picks me. And in all honesty, when I checked into the hotel the other night, they said, uh, Mr. Stover, welcome. Stover. Because Brent Stover will be here and he will be hosting. So Brent, you're, you're Mr. Hollywood himself. Your suite is uh, ready. We did not touch the fruit basket, promise. Armani Rogers back in at quarterback and throws a dart over the middle and it's caught there by Makai Stevenson and a flag comes flying in the defensive backfield well after the play was over. So Rogers is back in after two series with Max Gillum. And maybe UNLV has found an offensive spark. It's a 20 yard throw. And it's going to be head-to-head -head contact right here on Damian Baber. Personal foul, targeting number five defense, leading with the crown of the helmet. 15-yard penalty if you add to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Previous plays under further review. Well, here's the review. Yeah, and right there, yeah, you see clearly helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact right there. Damian Baber lowers the crown of his head, runs it right up Stevenson's as well. So this should be a quick... You see right here, 15 yard penalty. He will miss the rest of this game. He will be eligible to play to start the bowl game, but will be out if this play is upheld. Well, they're reviewing it right now. Right, you see crown of the helmet. Then you want to keep as a defender square up, face up. It protects not only the, the offensive player, but it protects you. You don't want to put your head down and get that contact yourself. It's not safe for anyone. 
And we've seen a lot of these penalties called. These kids and these coaches can need to continue working on proper form and proper technique in the offseason. All right there, a little head to head. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Number five is ejected from the game. And so Baber is ejected from the game. There's a disqualification rules. If it's in the first half, the DQ is only for the rest of the game. And so. Yeah, it's unfortunate because he's one of the best players on that defense. He's all over the field. You turn it on. That's the first thing I asked the, the coaching staff is tell me a little bit more about this player. He is all over the place. They will miss him for this ball game. You see his season three interceptions, 12 interceptions in his career. And it's senior night two, which is unfortunate for him. Shotgun and Lexington Thomas on the left side. And we'll go back to that previous play, Armani Rogers. We talked about at the start of the show, if he can throw the football, he just needs the, the opportunity to play a full game. I mean, it's been a couple months since he's been able to play all four quarters and be able to demonstrate that, hey, I am a different quarterback. Yes, I can run, but I can make throws just like that. I think he's been very accurate so far tonight. He just needs more opportunities. Second down and seven, Rodgers to carry it, and he's swallowed up. Three Nevada players there to get him. Caleb Metter and Jarius McDade, no gain on the play. Well, look at this ball. You see right here, tall, big hands, great delivery, and threw an absolute dart right in the money, right in the chest of his receiver, Stevenson. It's not the, the, the throws 15 to 20 yards or even the post routes or go balls. It's more of the, the slants, the quick outs, the hitches he needs to continue to work on. I said that just comes with more repetition. Has time, another middle shot, and that's a collision right as the ball arrived. Kai Stevenson was the intended receiver. And I think this is fourth down territory uh, right here. I think you've crossed the 50, you crossed the 40. I would have more liked to see that previous play, maybe a run, knowing that you're going to go for it on fourth down right here. So now a fourth down and eight. 23 nothing, Nevada. Rogers in trouble, escapes. And he has Thomas, makes the catch, makes a move into the end zone. What a throw by Armani Rogers. And that's what that young man can do right there. He can escape, he can extend the play. See him right here in the pocket. Gets through his read, nothing's there. Let me get out of the pocket. And you see the defense, the respect he gets as a runner. Everyone comes down, pulls it back. Finds his talented running back for the touchdown. Great throw. That's a tough throw to make going to your left, too. There are signs of life here in the desert for UNLV. Down 23 0. And we got to get a little taste of what Armani Rogers can do running it. And a great throw to get his team on the board right there. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Bud Light. Reminding you not to drink and ride your horse. By Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And by Sonic. Sonic presents the quarter pound double stack cheeseburger plus tots for only $2.99. Some of the biggest moments this year in college football and our presentation on CBS Sports Network. And that last moment there, that was the Old Dominion's upset at number 13, Virginia Tech. 68 regular season games played. Still have the Conference USA Championship. Couple bowl games as well. Here, 23 0, Nevada on top until UNLV on an acrobatic throw by Armani Rogers to Lexington Thomas. And this is what he can do get through his reads, Armani Rogers. Big toe in the pocket, but right there, 
the thought of running, you see all the defenders, they lose sight of who they're going to be guarding, who they have in man and zone, because of the threat of the run from the quarterback. And Lexington Thomas doing a great job. And these coaches, they love it. They got their stud quarterback back there, making plays for him early in this ball game. And we talked about Thomas, and uh, remember, he was in a boot for five weeks, which meant he couldn't do anything, really, to keep himself in shape. So he's on the bike trying to stay warm. Back to work goes Ty Ganji. Back deep goes Ty Ganji. And that one's picked off. Intercepted. UNLV with a turnover. Jaquez Khalili. The senior corner and a local guy out of Las Vegas. Same play they ran earlier, just a double post, one on one on the outside. Khalili doing a great job running the route, pretty much further receiver there, beats him to the spot. We talk about a great last drive to put some points on the board. Now you get a turnover yourself on the defensive side. And that quarterback right there, Ty Ganji, has not thrown a lot of those these past four games. We talked about eight touchdowns, one pick the last four games heading into tonight. He does a great job protecting it, but better defensive play there. Rodgers hands it off. Thomas fighting for yards. Thomas is the type of back that will be stuffed for a quarter and then bust a 70-yarder. That's kind of what he's been in his career. He's 18 100-yard games and 40 career rushing touchdowns. And we saw that for San Diego State. Their win right there. Lexington like Thomas, that big run late in the game to get them that victory. It's just stay committed to the run. Stay committed, and all of a sudden, he can find a crease and take it for 70. Yeah, that was a 75-yarder at San Diego State that really broke the, uh, the Aztecs back late in that game. Lightning is hits, fights forward, and he's got the first down. Let's go to New York, Brent Stover. Fellas, the Mountain Division on the line in Boise. Jordan Love slings a nine-yard touchdown to Jalen Green. Utah State, early in the game, takes the 7-0 lead. Thank you, Brent. There's the standings in the Mountain Division. Of course, Fresno State has come out of the West and will travel to meet either Boise State or Utah State in the Mountain West Championship game next week. All of a sudden, the Rebels, Evan Owens on the grounds with a nice carry there. That's a nine-yard pickup, and Armani Rogers has sparked this offense. And that's why I'm scratching my head up here when they took him out after that second possession. Keep him in the game. Keep him in the a rhythm. Get him going a little bit, the quarterback position. He can make plays like that, and then he just opens everything else up. The run game and then the pass game as well. Second down and one. That was the first stop by UNLV's defense in the pick. Straight through. Owens. He's got a burst inside the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. And the Rebels are rolling. I want you to take a look right now at the offensive line. Great job getting off on the snap right here, creating the hole. All five guys plus the tight end in rhythm. And then Evan Owens, we talk about Lexington Williams with that ability to hit the hole and go. That was impressive from number 29 right there to get the big play on the ground. But more credit to the big guys up front. So they mark it at the 18. And you see the drive all on the ground, 54 yards of it. Rodgers to the corner. And it's over the head of Makai Stevenson. And let's check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Hey there, Rich. After that huge interception by Jokel, Jokez Khalili, you could feel the palpable momentum shift on this UNLV sideline. Guys cleared the bench coming over to dab him. He was posing for imaginary pictures here along the sideline. It definitely was a much-needed spark for the Rebels. Boy, no kidding, A.J. They were down. The Rebels were 23-0 when they got to the second quarter. But they have dominated offensively here in the second. Rodgers open, caught, touchdown. Follow low, Giovanni. 18 yards.
Gotta love the play design. You see the bow tight ends lined up to the right of your screen right there. Noah Bean clears it out. And Giovanni falls right behind. And that cover two zone, you take the safety out the first tight end. Number two comes right behind, wide open for the touchdown. Remember, it started with a pick. Joquez Khalili picks off Ty Ganji. Four long runs, and then Rodgers to Faolo. The Rebels are back. Thanksgiving weekend in Las Vegas. Nevada's lead was 23-0. It's 23-14 right now. Verizon Halftime Report's coming up. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, and Kevin Carter from our CBS Sports Network studio in New York for a look around college football. All kinds of stories in college football today. Big upsets, big wins, movers, shakers. That top 10 should have some movement as well. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray. And A.J. Ross here in Las Vegas. First quarter was absolutely dominated by Nevada, but UNLV has owned the second quarter. They have owned the second quarter. I think right now for Nevada in this offense, they just got to take a little bit break. They're taking some shots downfield. You see right there, the big post picked off with the interception. Then UNLV taking advantage of it. And right now you get the ball back. He's still got the lead at 23 to 14. Get back to the run game a little bit. See if you can pound it out. Keep your defense on the bench for a little bit. Give those guys a breather. So they've had a long second quarter. End of the first, chasing around Armani back there at quarterback. Toa Tower is hit and dropped. Gabe McCoy came shooting through. And the sophomore linebacker out of Pittsburgh, California. And all of a sudden, the momentum has gone from the offense to the defense. An interception and then a run stopping play and a loss of two. I think they've settled in a little bit more. Not as aggressive as we saw those first couple possessions. They're kind of sitting back and forcing Nevada's offense to earn every yard. Kanji on second down and 13. <laughs> Tower again smothered. Jameer Outsi. And McCoy also in on that stop. And the Rebels emotional right now. This place was absolutely flat when Nevada came out and scored on their first four possessions. And it was funny talking to both the defensive and offensive coaches yesterday for this UNLV, UNLV team. They said when Armani came back and when Armani's in the game, it gets everyone excited. That's their leader. That's their guy. He brings juice to this team. Offensively, now you're seeing it on the defensive side. Third down, 13. Little inside throw there. Romeo dubs the catch, trying to cut through the linebackers, and he's caught and stopped at the 26-yard line. It's a gate of maybe five, and there's another stop for this UNLV defense and a big shot of confidence you would expect. Yeah, and hopefully with a good punt return here, get you a decent field position. Offensively, you're in the groove right now, and that's a dangerous thing when you have a quarterback like Armani, who's not only running the ball well and extending plays, but we've seen some tremendous passes too. So if I'm a defensive coordinator, I don't know what you do. Do you, you load the box up? You can throw it right out of your head as well. This is the first punt for Nevada, and it's not a good one. It lands at midfield and rolls to the 43-yard line of UNLV. Nevada has the lead. UNLV has the momentum in a great rivalry in the Mountain West. Phillips 66 Athlete of the Week, Asani Rufus. And with more on that, here is A.J. Ross. That's right, Rich. An anchor in the Wolfpack secondary, Asani Rufus suffered a devastating broken leg last, last November, making his return for his senior season questionable. With sheer grit and determination, he's not only persevered, he's playing at an elevated level, currently ranked third all-time in Nevada history with 326 tackles. Coach Norvell calls him a dedicated leader both on and off the field and the intangible he brings to this team can't be measured in stats alone. All right, thank you, AJ. UNOV back to work, and Armani Rogers throws deep and incomplete. And Sonny Rufus, our Phillips 66 student athlete of the week. Now, Nevada academically has been terrific this year. You see the total yardage 
What a flip flop from the first to the second quarter. This Wolfpack team APR is the academic progress rate which measures school student athletes and you would expect at the top you'll find Northwestern and Duke and schools like that. Nevada is actually 10th on that list this year. Swing pass. It's Thomas out of the backfield. It comes to the 45 tackled out of bounds at the 46. That's a gain of only three. Jay Norvell has done a really nice job on the field and in the classroom. And that's one of his goals, too. It's, and it's every head coach is not only develop them on the football field, but in the classroom, too. And Jay Norvell's done a great job already. It's, it's, it's year two. And we're talking about this team having possibly eight wins this season, going to a great bowl game, having a chance to get nine wins. They're buying in both on the field and in the classroom. Yeah, three wins last year. Rodgers will tuck it and go. And the big man spun off his feet, crash landing at the 48. Don Peterson with the hit. He is short of the first down. It's a great job right here. You love when the quarterback, he keeps his eyes down the field. That's the most important thing, because if you tuck it and run right away, that's when the defense is going to come up. Just enough to try to get close. A little surprised. I thought with the big quarterback able to run, you cross the 50-yard line, you got some momentum on your side. I could have seen those guys going forward on fourth down. Hayes Hicken, the transfer from Utah. Caleb Fossum is going to watch this one land at the five and kick into the end zone. It's a 49-yard punt. So it's a big turnaround, and they can add to this win total with a game here tonight and a bowl game to follow. But these are some of the teams that have made a, a really sharp U-turn in the right direction this year. And, and these bottom three right here, all Mountain West teams. I mean, this is a very talented conference. You got great ball by those three. And then you got the Fresnos, you got the San Diego States. But what he's done in year two, we talk about buying in. The players buy in to what he's preaching, offensively, defensively, taking care of yourself. And right now, he seems to have their ear. So Nevada was stopped on downs their last drive. They threw a pick two possessions ago. And Farrell Hester, the sophomore linebacker, comes up along with Evan Austry to make the stop. It's a gain of one. And we talked about Austry to start this game off about the safeties having a lot of responsibility, focusing on the slot receivers, the talented slot receivers, and then getting downhill to make tackles. That's a great job. Eyes in the right place and making a great tackle for a short game. What's changed about this offense for Nevada? Is it simply UNLV's defense is better? I think UNLV right now is just making, you see right there, three-man rush, making them earn everything. And Ganji's throw incomplete. Dalen Henley on the sideline, and he did not keep his feet in bounds. And it's going to be third down. You see that right foot, the toe on the, on the line right there. But we talk about to start this game off, we're going to see a good angle there. Yeah, the right foot was down. To start this game off, UNLV was a little bit aggressive. They wanted to be the aggressors. They got hit with some big home run plays. Right now, we've seen a couple times just rushing three guys. Looks like they're going to do it just again, once again now. Maybe even to just bring a fourth. Four receivers, three-man rush. Time for Ganji. Flush to the right. Looking downfield, throws and it's broken up. Diving play there. J.D. Alexander, the transfer from Arizona State, making the play. May have gotten one away with one right there. Left arm kind of got caught behind the receiver, kind of tagged him. You see it right there. The great job defensively, drop eight. Making Ty Ganji a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket. Can't find anyone, anyone downfield. Has to escape. And we got eight defenders back there locking everyone down. Great job once again defensively. After the jersey got straightened out, that was actually Bailey Lalongi who made the play. That is a line drive kick. That's dangerous. It could hit a uh, member of the UNLV team and be a fumble, but instead it's downed. Not a good kick at all. That didn't even get to midfield. Great field position. For UNLV, two below average punts by Quentin Conaway. Yeah, just the rugby style. Let's see what happens. 
lucky he didn't hit the guy protecting him right up front. Just a low line drive. I think he just kicked it a little bit low. And right now, once again, good field position. Like you said, Richard, UNLV, see if they can capitalize on it. First and 10. Thomas pitches it back on a reverse. Coming near side, Tyreek Collins cuts at the 30, avoids a tackle, spilled over the 20 to the 19-yard line. Little bit of trickery for UNLV. A little reverse right there, and you gotta love. Keep an eye on Armani right there. Number one, the quarterback gets signed, lined up, and just enough going against a six-foot, 290-pound defensive lineman. Not many quarterbacks can lock up a guy just long enough to get the receiver on the outside. Rodgers gets a block from Thomas, heads to the edge, and gets out of bounds. He's a lot faster than he looks. I mean, he's 6'5". He's listed at 225. It's a long stride. It's a long stride. This one's a little bit, I think a little miscommunication between the quarterback and running back. How about Lexington right there? Throwing his shoulder in there as well. He's not the biggest, 5'9", 170, but the coaches told us yesterday, Lesson Thomas, he's not scared to mix it up a little bit. He understands protections, and he can block for his quarterback there on the run as well. Second down and four. Thomas straight ahead, and he's going to be well short of the first down, maybe a yard. Jarius McDade made the stop. And UNLV, who have scored the last 14 points, Four and a half left in this first half. Faced with a third down and a long three, maybe four. Deep in Nevada territory. Jay Norvell saw his offense score in their first four possessions. Has watched UNLV put two touchdowns up since. Third down three. On the ground, Campbell at the doorstep. Tyson Williams made the stop. First and goal, UNLV. And when you're able to RP, or just a zone, simple zone read, defense is too hesitant, scared of the quarterback running. Campbell again, and this time gets caught up at the line. Gabriel Sewell and Kyle Adams made the stop. And Campbell, 5'11", 225. The running back you'll see most of the time in third and short situations. And then we get closer to the goal line right now as well. I think Nevada wants to take a timeout. They do. Timeout, timeout. The first timeout the 30-second timeout. UNLV had brought a fullback in, Jamie Neal. And he was in there along with Campbell. Neal at 6'1", 270. Provides a lot of lead blocking from the backfield. We'll see if he stays in that package. There's a look at Tony Sanchez in his fourth year, the 44-year-old who had such an incredible run as a high school coach in this community at Bishop Gorman High School. In six years, he won six 4A state championships. He was a, a wide receiver in college at New Mexico State. And he took a big step forward last year. That's why this 3-8 and eight for uh, Sanchez, as he told us yesterday, was, was very disappointing. If they can get this game, if they can knock off Nevada, that would salvage it somewhat. And a lot of excitement in the program. New facility, obviously the, the stadium being built for the Raiders that they will be shared with UNLV. Raised a lot of money, a lot of cool stuff going on right now. And you see Neal is in there, quarterback Snoop Rogers, and he's in, touchdown. And the fullback Neal, wasn't the lead blocker, he was the lead pusher. He has a great job too, just a quick cadence. Defense isn't completely set, they're waiting for the quarterback to go blue 80, blue 80, set hut. He gets up on the quick, gets right in there, and then uses his 6'5 frame to push ahead. A little help from the fullback from behind him as well. He's gonna have a sore back tomorrow. Yeah, you said it, Neil, 6'1", 270, probably one of the biggest fullbacks in the country. I think he was a little gentle, though. Didn't go in, didn't spear his quarterback with the helmet, used his hands, just a gentle nudge yeah, you don't, you to don't get want, him in. You don't, gentle. Want to, don't want to get targeting on your own guy. No. That would be a first. But look at this. This was 23-0 after, after a quarter, and, and 
This had all the earmarks of an absolute blowout. And UNLV is up off the canvas and has put three touchdowns up. And just like that, it is a two-point game. It just makes me keep wanting to go back to those two possessions that Max Gillum was in there at quarterback. If you keep Rodgers in those two, who knows? I mean, this could be maybe a 28-23 game, but look at the, look what he's able to do right now at the quarterback position. Obviously, we know he can run. Look at those strides, being able to run the defense, and then the ability to then get the defense to suck up, not so fast, throw it over top to Thomas, and then most importantly, his development in the pocket, sitting in there, dissecting the defense. We've seen some very accurate throws down the field, and then using his 6'5 frame on that QB sneak on that last touchdown. We told you one of the questions about Rodgers coming into the game would be his fitness. Would he be able to go an entire game? He's had that boot on, really hasn't had a chance to play a full game. He looks fresh right now. And the scary thing is the coach has said he's still not 100% right now. He's still recovering. But I tell you what, he looks pretty darn close right now to being what we saw to start this season off. Good kick there. Nevada's got it at the 25. New York's got it. Brett Stover with an update. Rich Alexander Madison with a 15 yard run. On the very next play, he punches it in from two yards out. Boise State has tied Utah State at seven apiece late first. Thank you, Brent. We are almost late second here, and we'll be headed back to Brent and the Verizon halftime report. Nevada with the football, their 23 lead, 23 nothing lead is almost all gone. Mannix with the catch, and he's bounced out of bounds. UNLV absolutely could not stop Nevada on their first three possessions. Three long touchdown drives that looked easy. Yeah, they've done a great job, though. Hunkering down and momentum, momentum is real. It really is, especially in football. You get it on your side a little bit, your offense starts moving the football, you gain some confidence on defense, get a couple three and outs, get the interception. This defense is feeling great right now. Second down and nine, Kelton Moore straight ahead. Moore has a touchdown run in the game, and he's got a first down here. Javen White brought him down for UNLV to the 37 yard line. And that was an important, this is an important drive in general for this offense, but that was a very important first down because UNLV, these past couple of series, have been doing a great job. Sometimes all it takes is one first to get things rolling. Ganji pulls it, fires it to the sideline, caught there by Fossum, and he just got the edge and tripped over the 45-yard line, it looked like. He lands at the 47, and that's where the first down stick is. He's got the first down. And great blocking on the edge. If you're going to run these screens to the outside, these bubbles and swings, you have to have great blocking from your receivers. Unselfish for those guys protecting their inside slot guy. Matt Mummy, the offensive coordinator, the son of Hal Mummy, the uh, innovative and somewhat revolutionary head coach and offensive coordinator in college football. The air raid, the same stuff that Mike Leach runs, the same stuff that uh, Texas Tech has been so good at. Well, Matt Mummy has brought this offense, and he says, look, we are an air raid team, but we want to be a balanced air raid team. It, it really, you turn on Washington State. You watch those guys, they're throwing it 50, 60 times a game. This is a great mixture of a little bit of run and a, and, and a little bit of pass as well. That one just out of the hands of McLean Mannix, the sophomore wide receiver. It stops the clock on the incompletion, and it's third down and seven. A minute 55 left. In this half, UNLV has got all of their timeouts left. And if this is not a first down and the ball's on the ground and the clock isn't stopped, you'd expect UNLV maybe to call a timeout. Yeah, I would too. Right now, your offense is moving the ball. If you're able to call a timeout about 150 to 148, somewhere around there, you give your offense plenty of time with two timeouts moved down the field. Kanji, three-man rush, lots of time, threads the needle, caught there by Fossum, right at the first down marker at the 42, and he's got the first down. And the thing Matt Mummy told us about these slot receivers, they understand defense. You see right there Fossum seeing the coverage. He knows it's drop eight, finds the window, 
and shows his numbers to his quarterback. Very friendly, but that's just smart play by Fossum right there in the slot. Drew Techman made the stop on that play for UNLV. Ganji again over the middle, caught by Mannix. He's got another first down. 13 more yards. Clock stops as they move the chains. Nevada has two timeouts and on the move at UNLV territory. And that's the same thing right there for Mannix. Understand, not running through the zone, but kind of throttling before the safety is very friendly for Ganji. And now Time UNLV out. is going to call a timeout just to settle their defense down. Well, and right now, this is a big drive defensively to hold Posse to a field goal to keep this to a 26 to 21 game. And maybe even right now for UNLV, we talked about the aggression with the play call from Tim Skipper. This is the point where you may see a couple more blitzes to see if you can push Nevada out of field goal range and keep this to 23 to 21 game. All right, Aaron Murray, record setting quarterback at the University of Georgia. To my layman's eyes, the completions and the success for Nevada's passing game, deep balls in the first quarter. Here, it's been 10 to 15 yards over the middle. But that's more their game. That, that That's more of the air raid offense. It's not bombs away over and over. It's the throws about 7 to 12 yards is that's what the air raid, air raid offense is based out of. First and 10, the 29 of UNLV. Ty Ganges, swing pass there. Kelton Moore racing to the sideline. And he's knocked down right at the 20-yard line. He's going to be a yard shy of a first down. And that's where Ganges developed the most, I think, this season. And Jay Norvell knows it is his ability to get through his reads. In years past, it's been one, two, and maybe take off and use his legs. Right there, you see him one, two, and then get down to his check down. He's back on a little swing route to get nine yards. Second down and one. Moore. Great move. Hit there at the 11 and falls to the nine. Dalton Baker made the stop. Really a nifty move by the junior out of Arlington, Texas. And nifty for a 240 pound back, too. There's a little bulldozer back there. But showing that he, can, along with that hammer, is a little swift, too. Ball sits at the 10. Shotgun here. It's first and goal, and Ganji's going nowhere. He's buried at the eight, and Nevada's going to call a timeout. Gabe McCoy was the first to get there. I think right timeout, now. Nevada, your second time out of the half. And I think Jay Norvell right now understands the way UNLV's offense is rolling, the way his defense is playing. He needs seven points right now. And this is a completely different ball game. Got the confidence on UNLV, UNLV's offense. Seven points, get this to a 30 to 21 game. Get the momentum back on your side before this half ends. What a roller coaster this first half has been. Let's check in with A.J. Ross. A.J.? Hey there, guys. Coach Norvell was not happy with that last call. Uh, Kelton Moore has been driving, putting yards down, uh, really getting close in the red zone here. So that's why he called that timeout, readjusting, and we'll see what play they develop here. All right, thanks. Jay Norvell. Arizona State, Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, the Raiders, the Colts, all Big Ten defensive player for Hayden Fry at Iowa, coached under Barry Alvarez, Bob Stoops, Bill Snyder, finally getting his first chance as a head coach, leading an incredible turnaround for Nevada. From three wins last year, seven this year, looking for number eight tonight in a rivalry game. Ganji end zone incomplete. Great coverage there. Elijah Cooks was the intended receiver. That's Evan Austri, the safety. And they like Cooks inside the red zone. Six touchdowns this season. And at 6'4", 215, Ganji needs to put it on his body and make the DB, DB run right through him. There was a signal for a timeout. The Nevada bench started walking towards the field. Now the officials wave him back. No timeout. Third down and goal. 46 seconds left, first half. We got Dubs. Looks like maybe one on one down here at the bottom of your screen. Here comes a blitz. Ganji hit as he throws for the corner, and it's incomplete. 
Demetrius Gibbs on the coverage. And just as you pointed out, Aaron, Nevada's going to settle for a field goal try, and that's a huge win for the UNLV defense. That's yeah, a big win right there. Got a and breeze first, in his face. And he missed an extra point earlier, too. So I know this is a little farther away, about five or six yards farther. But this is an important kick to at least get this to a 26 to 21 game. Ahmed knocks it through. Yeah, let's go back and look down this play right here. Bring in the full out blitz. You see everyone lined up, but I want you to focus down here. Once again, a crossing route versus cover zero. The cornerback gets a little messed up. And as a quarterback, you're taught, you feel the pressure, cover zero. All you gotta do is just retreat a little bit. Keep going and then almost just lob it out there. Let your receiver come underneath that and catch it. Those crossing routes versus man and cover zero have been big plays. That time, tie games, you just missed it. In a rivalry game, you saw Tony Sanchez. He watched Nevada race to a 23-0 lead in the first quarter. And then Nevada nearly lost that lead. UNLV ripped off three consecutive touchdowns. Nevada has a field goal and with 36 seconds left before we hit. Brent Stover in New York with the Verizon halftime report. It is a five point Wolfpack lead. 35 yard line. Not a lot of time for Armani Rogers and the Rebel offense here. Yeah, and you also don't want to maybe force something down the field and give the ball back with some kind of silly turnover. I could see maybe a run right here from this offense. If you pop a 10, 15 yarder off, then maybe burn a timeout or get going and then a two minute drill. The last thing you want to do is try forcing a deep pass and maybe cause a turnover. He has the wind at his back, a blitz on the way, quarterback draw, and Rodgers is tripped up. That's a heck of a play by Dom Peterson, the enormous Defensive tackle, six feet, 315. And he just got a handout to knock over Rodgers. Yeah, that's kind of expected right there. See if you can reel off 10, 10 plus yards to get going. But great half by both teams. Momentum going back and forth. This should be an exciting second half, Rich. This is a nasty rivalry here, UNLV and Nevada. And man, was this a fun ride in the first half. From 23-0 Nevada to 26-21 at the half. After the break, we'll send you to our CBS Sports Network studio for the Verizon Halftime Report. Brent Stover, Houston Nut, Kevin Carter standing by in Las Vegas, 26-21 Wolfpack. In Las Vegas, Coors Light first half stats. A 23-0 start in the first quarter for Nevada. A great run in the second quarter for UNLV. And a five-point game headed towards the third quarter. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Murray and A.J. Ross. What a roller coaster and an entertaining one it was in the first half. It's been back and forth. It's been exciting. You talk about Nevada coming out very strong in that first quarter. UNLV finding their identity on offense getting the interception, getting some great stops. Tremendous, tremendous first half. So we'll, uh, we'll check out some of the highlights. All right, now look, it was Nevada who owned the game to start with. Oh, they did a tremendous job. Those first three possessions, big home run hits, feeling the pressure that UNLV was bringing defensively, taking advantage of it. And then UNLV, Armani started rolling a little bit, running the football. You see the defense coming up and then dumping off to his talented running back. Then most importantly, his ability in the pocket very accurate so far this game has made some tremendous throws it's going to turn into an entertaining second half now now significant that the ball is being held on the tee during halftime while we were away the wind has really really kicked up here in the desert i mean it's uh, it's probably up 25 look at this kickoff just stall in the air 
The wind is probably at 25, 30 miles an hour right now. And that kick goes out of bounds. Nevada gets the first possession. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball in place at the 35 yard line. First down. And we check in with A.J. Ross. Hey there, Rich. When I spoke with Nevada coach Jay Norvell about the huge momentum shift in this game, he says they just need to execute better offensively. He said they missed some uh, blocks. He also mentioned the wind. You were just mentioning it. They've had to make some adjustments. And on defense, they just got to stick to the fundamentals. Meanwhile, you know, VEB coach Sanchez says once they managed to settle down their defense, everything shifted in their favor. And offensively, you can expect to see Armani Rogers under center the rest of this game. All right, good stuff there, A.J. That's Kelton Moore over the left side and that starts the second half Nevada with the first possession they scored on their first four possessions three touchdowns and a field goal for Jay Norvell's offense ran into some trouble UNLV's offense got going and UNLV's defense made some big plays in that second quarter more and down he goes at the 30, or rather the 41 yard line. It's a gain of three, third down and about four. Aaron Murray, what, what difference does this win make to both quarterbacks? It's, it's definitely tough. I would say more advantage towards Armani just because he can run the football. So I think this really won't affect him. We've seen him throw it. I think he has plenty of arm strength to cut through the win. And I think the same's true with Ty Ganji. He can move around a little bit too, but don't don't expect too many deep balls today. If this thing gets stuck up there in the air, it's gonna start to wobble a little bit. Ganji's throw caught there, right in Rebel territory. Elijah Cooks cutting across the middle. That's the soft spot, at least lately. It's a great job right off the defender's ear right there, right off the linebacker's ear, just a quick slant. But more throws like that. We talk about the win. Slants, hitches, quick outs. It was a 13-yard gain for Nevada. Ganji back to work. And that little screen there, McLean Mannix. Now the wind is at the back of Nevada and at the back of Ganji. Well, you could see on that throw there, there, he's been very accurate on those bubbles and swing routes. And the ball kind of tailed on him just at the end right there and dove into the ground. A little low for Mannix to catch it. But I mean, that's a lot of gust right there. The key for a quarterback, you have to throw a spiral. Because as soon as you throw any kind of wobbler or any kind of duck, the wind's going to catch it and kill it right in the air. Second down and 10. From the Rebel 45, busting through is Toa Tawa. And he got to the 43. That's a gain of three. This is going to be third down and about six. And both offenses ran it very effectively in that first half. UNLV 143 in Nevada, about 129 in that first half. So both teams are establishing the line of scrimmage. And right now, I can see if they get this to a third or fourth and manageable. They would most likely go for it, so a run is not out of the question here. Boy, the wind seemingly getting stronger right now. And on third down, there's the quick pop. Did Mannix hold it? No, he didn't. It hit the turf, and McLean Mannix couldn't hold on. And Nevada now, let's see what they do. The football sits at the 42. And there's the bounce. And right now, Nevada's going to leave their offense on the field and go for it on fourth down. I like the decision here. Would have much preferred just to hand it off there and get to that fourth and short situation. But still look for the slot receivers here. These guys do a great job in these third and fourth and about medium situations. Find the hole inside the defense. Ganji sets, throws in traffic. And incomplete. Jacquez Khalili who had the interception in the first half, makes the play. And a great job. You see right there, everyone's locked up. Galili, tremendous job right on top of his guy. And once again, UNLV coming out to start this half, playing great defense. Get their offense the ball back. Uh. 
Chick-fil-A fan cam. What happened to our 70 degree sunshine in Las Vegas today? It is downright chilly right now. I just want everyone to know up in the booth right now, you see all the cool fans, but Rich pulls out his sweatshirt, getting a little soft on me up here. But hey, good for you. You looked ahead to the weather. Yeah, it's just like the rest of these fans, I did not. It's called preparation. Yes, I was not prepared. I thought it was going to be a beautiful night. Still is. Might make it a little bit more difficult for these quarterbacks, though. All right, first touch for UNLV. This is Xavier Campbell, and he's upended at the 47-yard line. Armani Rogers got the start, played two series, and then was pulled for a couple series, came back with a vengeance, and led UNLV on three oh. touchdown drives. And the stats are tremendous. Throwing the football down the field, we saw deep cross routes. We saw the seam route to his tight end for the touchdown, and then utilizing his legs. I'm telling you what, he gets everyone excited on that football team. Lexington Thomas. He has yet to break a run, though he did have that nifty catch and run for a touchdown. Barney Cotton on the bottom there. In his fourth year as the offensive coordinator, longtime assistant at Nebraska. Iowa State was an offensive lineman for Tom Osborne at Nebraska. And right now going forward with Armani Rodgers being told that he's going to be the quarterback for the rest of this game. He should feel some confidence now. A little stamp of approval from the coaching staff. His teammates are excited. And let's see if he can go out there and win it. See how he handles the wins. Thomas is in trouble, makes the catch. And a terrific job by Malik Reed, who is an absolute playmaker. Was a defensive end, was first team Mountain West Conference, and switched to linebacker this year. Look at the throw right here, though. You get it up in the air, and a little bit behind from our angle up here at the booth. The ball started to tail to the right a little bit, the way the, the wind is going. So as a quarterback, you have to make sure you drive it through your target. And obviously, like we said, make sure it's spinning, so that way it's able to cut through that wind. And it should be very interesting, too, for these punters going forward, especially punting in this direction. Clean snap, and that's the perfect type of punt in this win. There's a low line drive. Oh, ball's loose. Did it get tipped? It's picked up by UNLV. Officials say it was not touched by a Nevada player. That was really close. That was nearly a disaster for Nevada. On a windy night now in Las Vegas. Whoa, that was close. CBS Super Bowl season continues tomorrow. A doubleheader. You start with Patriots and Jets, and you top it off with Steelers in Denver to take on the Broncos. And the day kicks off with NFL Today, presented by Jeep at 12 Eastern. Aaron Murray, your Chiefs. Chiefs, man. at 9 and 2. That was a fun game. Against the Rams there Monday night. That team with Mahomes back there at quarterback. Tyreek, all those talented. Andy Reid's really showing off what he can do as an offensive coordinator. Boy, what a hit there by Bailey Lalongi, the senior out of Folsom, California. Ganji started out hot and had some big hits for a couple of touchdowns. But since then, the defense has been better. And now he's battling some wind here in Las Vegas. Yeah, so you're going to see tighter coverage by the DBs and then a little bit more downhill from the safeties too and run support, knowing the ball pretty much can't travel too far down the field. Ganji fires it, and it's incomplete. Windy here, but uh, not windy in New York. Brent Stover with this update. All right, indeed, guys. Hey, second quarter, Boise State up 17-7, but Jordan Love responds to Juan Quavey and Tarver this touchdown. Pulls Utah State to within three. All right, thank you, Brent. Aaron Murray, who you like in that ball game? Utah State, Boise State. Uh, it's it's a fun game so far. At Boise State, if, if Ripping continues to play well, he's a dynamic quarterback, and it's the third and fourth quarter. It's going to be tough to beat those guys on that blue turf. They're down at 10. Movement and flags. <laughs> UNLV twice early jumped off sides in situations like this. But uh, Trey Carter Wells. Ball start, number 39 offense. Five yard penalty, remain third down. 
Wells is number 49, but I believe he was the culprit. Well, you said it in the first half. Ganji did a great job utilizing the cadence, get the defense to jump. This time he got his own guy. You see the quick little fl flinch right there for number 49, Carter Wells. And with this wind, I wouldn't expect them to try to get it all through the air right now. Maybe a quick pass somewhere around 12 yards, 10 yards, and then see if the receiver can get some yards after catch afterwards in order to get the first. Third down, 15. Henley in motion. Ganji, little swing pass, and there's nothing there. Toa trying to create, and he almost gets the first down out of sheer will and strength. Now he's a tough guy to bring down, the freshman. Goes 5'8", 205, but he's short of the first down. They mark it at the 31, 13 yards on the catch and run. And Jay Norvell in Nevada going to have to punt the football. And this third quarter is shaping up uh, to be nothing like the first half, which was all offense. First quarter was all Nevada. Second quarter was pretty much all UNLV. No rugby style run up to this punt. That's a boomer and a great bounce. Look at that. Collins will pick it up. He's in trouble, escapes, and then is wiped out at the 13 yard line. Great rivalry in the Mountain West. Nevada on the road at UNLV. Thanksgiving weekend in Las Vegas. Rivalry in the Mountain West. Nevada and UNLV. They battle over the Fremont Cannon. We've got a national championship to be decided on CBS Sports Network on Thursday at 8 Eastern. Junior College National Championship. East Mississippi and Garden City, Kansas. On the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Here in the Mountain West, Armani Rogers and UNLV. Deep in their own territory, looking for some breathing room. Sam Hammond is there to make the stop. Rogers, the sophomore, who had a fracture of his foot, he missed a good chunk of this season after making four starts. He played last week, didn't start. He did start this game. And the key right now is get again at least one first time. We keep talking about the win. The wind's going to be in your punter's face, so you don't want to give Nevada good field position. Rogers throws. That's a quick pop there. That's caught by Keys to the, let's see, a 22-yard line, and he's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. And we've seen that's probably the third quick hitch we've seen. That's what the coaching staff wanted to see improvement from, is getting the ball out of Armani's hands with tempo and with speed. He's executed that. Look at this. Did you see Gabriel Sewell, the middle linebacker? Instead of going low, he went high. And he kind of crowd surfed on that quarterback sneak. And let's see where they mark this thing. He had to get just across the 23. And I think he's going to be just a hair short. It's going to be close, though. Now that's a measurement. Now, this is usually reserved for concerts here when you crowd surf, right? Yeah, it's soul number seven right there. You see him jump up there. Actually knocks Armani just enough to knock him to the right a little bit to slow his momentum. But this is big for this defense. If they're able to get a three and out, like we said with this win, their offense should get good field position with most, like, most likely not a great punt. Whoa! He got it! Just enough. So it pays him. He got a 6-5 quarterback. QB sneaks from one yard. And going back to last week's game versus Hawaii, those are the situations that Barton Cotton wanted to get better at. Third and one, fourth and one. Did not have any success in the second half, and that's one of the reasons why they lost that game versus Hawaii. And that's a game that the Rebels told us yesterday they really should have won. Inside screen there, caught by a spinning Drew Techman. That's his first catch. We have seen Drew Techman on offense. He's been playing safety, and we've seen him on special teams tonight. Yeah, the coaches love him. I mean, you're going to see him mostly on offense, but defensively, he played DB in high school. They love him out there in coverage, especially with all the receivers that we see for Nevada. They like him matched up one-on-one. -on -one. 
And like you said, too, you'll see him out there in special teams, punt return and kick return. He had an interception in that Hawaii game. This is Campbell, and Campbell's loose to the 40. He's 50. He is in the Nevada territory and down to the 41. Nephi Sewell and his brother Gabriel hauled him down. It's a great job blocking up front. Look at the right side of the offensive line. Pretty much elephants on parade right there. Sitakosa, the center, does a great job reach blocking. And then the running back does it the rest right there. Those are the explosive plays that Barney Cotton wanted to see from his offense tonight. Did you just drop a, uh, a Dumbo reference of elephants on elephants parade? Elephants on parade. The five big guys up front get them going in one direction. That zone blocking scheme, which they love to do. And you saw Gabriel Sewell holding that right arm, the starting middle linebacker, the leading tackler for Nevada is off the field right now as they tend to him. And there's Gabriel, his brother Nephi is uh, one of the safeties. They've got another brother, Penne, as you see one of the Rebels being helped off. Penne Sewell had a fabulous year on the offensive line for the Oregon Ducks. And they've got a fourth brother, as you see Jacobson on his way off. There's a fourth Sewell brother coming to a college football team near you. First and ten from the 41. Not much there for Lexington Thomas. Bounces outside and a good second effort. Nephi Sewell made the stop. It's a gain of one. And that's the area when you watch the running game for UNLV. They've had some big pops when they do the zone inside. So between the guard and center of the guard and tackle. But really the big plays like we saw the previous one is when they get all those guys, Rich's favorite new phrase, elephants on parade going in one direction, the outside zone, the stretch play. They've hit some big ones so far this season. Shotgun, Rogers rolling, fires down the field. Terrific catch, Makai Stevenson right at the 20. And he took a hit and held on. For all those who say that Armani Rogers can't throw, look at this throw to his left. On the run, about 15 yards, went in his face and puts it right on his receiver's face mask. That's a great throw and great concentration by Stevenson on the outside to haul it in. 19 yards on the completion, 21 yard line of Nevada. UNLV down five on the move. Six and a half left, third quarter. Rodgers will pull it and keep it and pay for it with a hit right at the 16 yard line. Holds the ball, gain of five, second and five. Our red zone is brought to you by Verizon. Two trips, two touchdowns. That's pretty good. Campbell outside to the five and he leaps and is met in midair by Daniel Brown comes down at the three yard line and it's going to be first and goal for UNLV. Campbell trying to make the highlight film trying to hurdle someone but that's that outside stretch run play we just talked about the offensive line keep watch the offensive line keep their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. They do a great job gaining leverage on the defensive line. <laughs> and then Campbell at 225, thinking he's about 190, trying to hurl the defender. Well, high snap. Campbell again, right side, and he is stuffed. And thank goodness Armani Rogers is six foot five and a great athlete. Watch this snap. This could have been a disaster for UNLV. I mean, the snap was an absolute bullet. He's a great athlete and using that 6'5 frame, but this is where two. Everything's in play right now. You get a quarterback sneak option at second and, and one. And then you get some of your big running backs in there and then Jamal Neal too. But look at this great reaction, great catching it. Rogers rolling, man open, caught, touchdown. Noah Bean. I think Nevada was thinking what I was thinking. Second and one. 
They're going to run it. Quarterback sneak. They bring the fullback in there. Jamal Neal. Everyone's downhill defensively. And then a great play action. A great call by Barney Khan. The play action. Get Noah Bean on just a simple drag route going from left to right. And then an accurate pass from Armani Rogers. The great job. I got to give credit to Barney Khan on that call right there. Third touchdown throw. Armani Rogers and UNLV down 23 nothing in the first quarter have come all the way back and in this rivalry game in the Mountain West UNLV has their first lead. Impressive stuff from UNLV. Yeah, and great play call right here to get to that 28 to 26. I want you to see the tight end right here and then these linebackers and how far they dive into the play action. And then Noah B, number 46, sneaks out behind. But you continue to run, run, run. And then look at the coaches. They're pumped. Barney Kahn right there in the bottom, raising the two hands for the touchdown. Great play design, second and one. A little play action bootleg to get this lead for UNLV. Henley with a fair catch at the two, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Let's take a look at our quarterback comparison, and it's brought to you by Sonic. The completion percentage right now for Armani Rogers 10 of 15, three touchdowns, no picks. He's running the ball well. And for Ty Ganji, start off the game out. We saw it up and down the field, this offense. They really have not been clicking these past two quarters. We'll see if he can get the lead back for him on this drive right now. So now Ty Ganji and the Wolfpack. You see the first quarter, it was 20-0, 23-0 before UNLV finally scored. And they've outscored Nevada 28-3-6. And another great play by the defense. Jericho Flowers, the junior corner coming up. That is no gain on the play, second down and 10. And it's been a great job by Tim Skipper, too, with this defense, kind of mixing it up, playing a little bit farther off, keeping everything in front. And he's excited about this group. He said, I wish we were healthier all year, and I wish we had more games, because they're buying in, they're playing better, and we're seeing it right now. Little swing there. Caleb Fossum is caught. <laughs> Yesterday, Tony Sanchez told us that his team learned a very painful lesson in Hawaii. They outplayed Hawaii on the islands for three quarters and did not finish. Didn't know how to finish. Right now, they are playing like a team that is determined to finish. And they got a lot to play for tonight. Senior night, big rivalry, play for the big cannon. Home crowd right now is feeling juiced. And you got your quarterback back as well. It's a lot of things to be excited about tonight. Third down and 10. Ganji in a shotgun. Looks like, looks like they're going to drop eight once again defensively. Drop play. And that is Kelton Moore, who is short of the first down by a yard and a half. Jacquez Khalili, who's made some big plays tonight with the stop for UNLV. It's been tough slant. Past few drives or ever since pretty much the end of the first quarter. We saw the stat about the score. Right now, this offense needs to find some rhythm. They need to get going once again, running. If this UNIV defense wants to continue to play off and soft, quick hitches, the run game, those are the things that are going to need to get going. Wobbly kick. Collins gets out of the way. And it's going to roll inside the 20 all the way to the 16-yard line. Four touchdowns for UNLV, and Armani Rogers' fingerprints are on all four. He's doing it all right now. Very confident, throwing the football, moving around the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield is the key. Always staying a quarterback, and then in the pocket. We saw 10 of 15, three touchdowns, and then the bootleg for the touchdown to get this lead to 28 to 26. He was out. Since September 22nd, came back last week, played at uh, Hawaii, limited play, eight carries, 31 yards, five of 15 through the air. But man, is he back tonight? The Rebels keep it on the ground, going to gain a couple there. 
Lexington Thomas brought down by Nephi Sewell. You can just feel the energy. You can feel the energy on the sideline. Defensive guys are watching in to see what he can do. Talking with the coaching staff yesterday, they're excited to have their QB back. I mean, he is the leader of this team, and he's a, an incredible playmaker. I know they only had three wins this year, but it's kind of crazy. If he was healthy all year, where this team could have been. Flags down. Ball start, number 72, offense, five-yard penalty, main second down. Hey, some good news for both teams. Remember we saw Gabriel Sewell leave with the, what was a painful right arm or wrist. He is back in, and on that same play, Nathan Jacobson, the senior tackle on a Snohomish, Washington, he left on that play. He's back in as well, so that's good news for both. Second down at 13. Rodgers is going to tuck it and not escape. Hausia Sakona, the junior out of Salt Lake City. It's a great play call. I want you to see the corner up top. Just going to bring a blitz, which is going to cause the defensive line to stunt to the right. They're going to start mixing it up, bringing guys from different positions. And then a great tackle right there. But they just want to find any way possible to make Armani Rodgers feel uncomfortable, whether it's running it or passing it for the rest of this ball game. This is third down and 13 with a tricky crosswind. Rodgers sets up, fires a bullet, deflected, and incomplete. In traffic. Darren Woods, Jr., the intended receiver. And that's not a good sign. You see him limping on his way over to the sideline. You hope that foot is okay. And it was a beautiful throw, though. I mean, he put that on an absolute rocket right there. Darren Woods needs to run through the route. You see a nice, cool, calm and collective in the pocket. I thought that was an accurate ball. Receiver needs to run through the catch. Into the win. The punt is hung up. McLean Mannix, a great bounce and a great roll for UNLV. Down inside the Nevada 33-yard line. <laughs> Keep it low and let it roll when you're kicking into the wind. And that ends up as a 54-yard punt. And now Nevada tries to get that first quarter magic back. If Nevada wins this football game, they'll go to 8-4 and four and 6-2 and two and be on their way to a bowl game and one of the best turnarounds in college football this year. And we saw it beginning this show. Plus four right now from last season. Love to get the plus five in the win column. It's going to start with Ty Ganji, quarterback. Play action. Ganji's throw. Sideline caught there. Romeo Dubs. With a win tonight. Six conference wins. They haven't done that since 2010, nor the eight wins. They joined the Mountain West in 2012. Of course, that 2010 team was Colin Kaepernick and a bunch of NFL players on that team. Oh, they had some studs back then. A lot of fun to watch. And this team's been a lot of fun to watch, too. This offense has been pretty exciting all season. First and 10, straight ahead. Toa Tawa runs into Gabe McCoy. Two yards for the game. You know, look. We, we've been talking about Nevada's offense and how good they were in the first quarter. But UNLV's defense was lost in that quarter, and so was their offense. And all of a sudden, the second quarter started, and everything changed. And here in the third, UNLV comes out, puts it in the end zone, and has their first lead of the game. Rivalry game, Mountain West Conference, UNLV up to after three. Right, it's been Nevada a 20 point first quarter a 23 nothing lead and then UNLV off the canvas and Armani Rogers took over 28 26 going into the fourth 
Jay Norvell's Wolfpack on the move. Just outside their 45, second down and eight. Handoff to Toa Tawa. And the big fella rumbles inside Rebel territory to the 47-yard line. That's a great block once again by Trey Carter Wells, number 49, the tight end, pulling around, getting out front of his running back. But man, Rich, we've had a fun game. We thought at first this game get out of hand. You know, he stepped it up offensively and defensively. Rivalry week, a lot of fun, a lot of emotion. We're talking to both coaching staff players. They want to win this game badly. They're down three. On a chilly night in Las Vegas. Oh, Tower is hit. Forges ahead. Picks up a couple. Roger Mann hauled him down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard. And Mann just grabbed on and held on for the ride. I think they're going to go for it. I would put it right here, though. Push UNLV back. Make them drive the distance. Hope your defense get three and out. But they're going to get their big running back involved. See if they can pound out a first down. But you see UNLV, they're going to bring the pressure right now. All lined up, ready to go. Ganji will keep it. Ganji is hit. Falls for the first down. Ty Ganji, 6'2", 205. Great job, great read, just a zone read. The defensive end wants to crash. Then once again, Trey Carter-Wells, number 49, on that backside block, just gets enough of the defensive end as he peels back to allow his quarterback to get the first down. Kelton Moore now in the backfield on first and 10. 42-yard line of UNLV, play action. Ganji thinking deep, fires to the sideline. Max is there, caught it at the 20. Stiff arm at the 18, ridden out of bounds. Big play for Nevada. That's a great throw by Ganji. Max in the slot right here. Just a little wheel route. But you see he understands, hey, I'm not going to beat my DB down the field. I got about a five to seven yard cushion. Let me hold up, friendly for my quarterback. Doing a great job right there, understanding the defense. 18 yard line of UNLV. Nevada marching. Ganji, play action, and through it, he was looking for Elijah Cooks. And miscommunication between Ganji and Cooks. Yeah, I think. Cooks was running a slant. Ganji was expecting just a quick hitch off the RPO run pass option. Is that a, a read by the receiver and the quarterback of a linebacker or a safety? No, right there. It's, it's pretty much the corners off, soft and off about six yards. The quarterback wants to rip it and take the, the, the quick hitch. He can. Just a little miscommunication maybe in the play call in the huddle there. Second down, 10. And this is going nowhere. It's going to be third down and about 12 as Kelton Moore is stuffed. Gabe McCoy is there. It's a loss of two. Great job defensively right here. McCoy getting off his block, number 25. In the tackle in the backfield. Had 12 tackles for loss this season heading into the game. And right now, too, as an offense, you got to start thinking. Windy right now. My kicker didn't miss an extra point earlier in this game. We got to get as close as possible to make this a little bit easier for him. Not a 15 to 20 mile an hour crosswind right now. Shotgun snap. They're going to run it here. And Moore's going nowhere. Captured there by Jericho Flowers. It's a gain of one. And here comes the field goal team for Nevada. Ramiz Ahmed is the kicker. Now, Ahmed attended two schools, Arizona and UNLV, did not play football, ended up walking on and made the team at tryouts. He's from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Sound familiar? Of course, that's where Tony Sanchez coached for six years. Snap, kick, and the crosswind is no worries for Ramiz Ahmed. Nevada has the lead. Back and forth they go in this great rivalry. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef?
by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by Phillips 66, proud to be here. The men and women of CBS Sports. And there is Paul Conley, PC as he's known. He has locked off a shot of the moon. Look at the focus, the crispness. I'm not sure who that guy is in the shot there. But PC's behind him, and PC held his shot despite the interloper in the booth. UNLV with the football. And he's bounced. There's Evan Owens at the 15 yard line. If you're just joining us, it's been a whale of a game so far. Nevada had a 23 nothing lead. Yeah, 23 nothing. UNLV came storing back behind Armani Rogers. A field goal by Nevada. And the Wolfpack is up by a point. Look at that. 23 nothing. And nothing was going right. UNLV couldn't move it. They couldn't hold on to the ball. And their defense gave up points on the first four possessions by the Wolfpack. That's Evan Owens. And he's back to the line of scrimmage. There's a lot of fans here from, I'm sure from Reno, but there are Nevada fans that live in Las Vegas. They, they keep a low profile. I mean, look, it's two different states. And yeah, they don't southern, like each other. Southern so. Nevada and Northern Nevada, it might as well be North and South Carolina, right? I mean, they are two very different states. But a good representation of Wolfpack fans here tonight. Ball start, number 78, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. And this is a tricky spot. You mentioned it, Aaron, talking about the wind and field position. And now with the penalty, it's backed up to the 10 yard line. Yeah, but the thing is with Armani right now, he has the arm strength and he can spin it pretty well where I don't think anything past 15 yards will affect his throw too much. Play action, Armani rolling, little toss there, Giovanni Faolo, and he's dropped. Asani Rufus is making a lot of plays tonight. It's a great job. Ran this play earlier to the left, just a three level vertical. The side of the roof is staying home, not biting on the play action. We talked about it earlier, 326 career tackles heading in tonight, three career interceptions. He has been all over the field once again. And a textbook tackle. Rodgers under pressure, and he's hit and dropped. Malik Reed on the linebacker blitz. Reed, a hybrid player, he'll play the linebacker. He'll move up on the end. And number 90 to the left of your screen. Great job with that right hand. And he is an animal. They move him from DN to linebacker. Third and long situation. They want him rushing the quarterback. So that's why you saw him put his hand in the ground on there, rush the right left tackle, and get that sack. That was almost blocked. A spiraling kick by Hayes Hickens and a good roll past midfield. And out of bounds at the 44 yard line. A one point lead for Nevada. Nine ten left in this ball game. 29 28 Nevada on top of UNLV. Yeah, Kelton Moore has been very dominant. We're expecting Toa Tawa, number 35, to have a field day, but it's been number 23. You see with the move, you see with the size, and then the speed once he breaks through the second and third level to take it the distance for the touchdown. Has had a tremendous day. You see it, 119, you just saw the touchdown run. Fifth career 100 yard rush game. And he's had a tremendous job. One point lead with the ball. Ganji play action, swings it out. Caught there by Romeo Dubs. Flags come flying in. Dubs goes down after a two yard pickup. Jacquez Khalili and Dalton Baker there to make the stop. And officials conferencing. 
It's going to be a high, low block in the receivers on the outside. Personal foul, chop block, number 33 of 49 of the offense. 15-yard penalty from the previous five. Remain first down. Yeah, they're both receivers are going to block on the end, just a swing route. Watch both these receivers up here. Going to block the same guy, do a little high-low action. Usually see that. I think it was just a little bit, bit miscommunication. Who's supposed to be blocking who? Both went after the same defender and got the chop block right there, which is huge right now. So all of a sudden it backs him up to first and 25. You can't engage high and then block low. No matter if you're in or out of the tackle box. And sometimes you just tell your receivers, just point out. Who do you got? Communicate to each other. So it's first down and 25. Ganji play action. Fires to the sideline. Good throw and catch. Dubs again. And he's down to the 44-yard line. That picks up a good chunk of yardage. 14 on the throw. And it's second down and 11. And that was a heck of a throw right there because Gabe McCoy, number 25, you're going to see him drop back into coverage and throws a nice little, what we call a two ball. You're like you're throwing over the goal post, over the drop in linebacker right there. Get this to more of a second and manageable. Bouncing it outside, Kelton Moore. And he lands right at midfield in the arms of Jericho Flowers. Six yards on the carry. Third down now and about six. That throw, two throws ago, that tremendous throw by Ty Ganji is pivotal because now you get the ball around the 50-yard line. If you get the first down, that's awesome. It's tremendous. If you don't, though, you're able to flip field position with a, hopefully a great punt and then make UNLV drive the field. He doesn't complete that ball two plays ago. It could be a little different situation. Third down. Ball right at midfield. More in motion. Blitz comes. Ganji gets rid of it and has a man. Caught at the 35 and down to the 25. Trey Carter Wells. Terrific reaction by Ty Ganji. 24 yards on the completion and run. There he is right here. They're just going to run crossing routes again. You see the DBs get a little bit confused. Who's responsible for who? And that's what happens when you play man-to-man -man and guys start crossing, you lose your responsibility. We've seen that a few times tonight. 26-yard line on first and 10. Moore steps over a tackler and gets to the 21-yard line. Jericho Flowers was bracing for a, a big collision there. I mean, Moore's 5'11", 240, and instead of steamrolling him, Moore simply stepped right over him. And Trey Carter, you just saw Wells, number 49, He's been great so far in blocking that big catch right there and taped up on the sideline. So hopefully he can get back in here in the next couple plays. See if he can get a little bit more involved inside the red zone. One point lead, Nevada moving. 21 yard line of UNLV. Not a good snap. Ganji catches it in traffic. It's picked off. Intercepted. Javen White for UNLV. White to the 40. Still on his feet. Midfield and into Nevada territory. Flag down, 37-yard line, and it came well after the interception. What a big play by UNLV's defense. Second interception of the night. During the return, holding number 25 of the defense. 10 yards from the spot of the foul remains UNLV's ball. Well, important that the flag came after the pick. Javen White right there does a great job not biting on the play action, stays home, keeps his eyes on the quarterback, and then drops right into the slant window to make the interception. That's a great job. This Nevada offense likes the motion guys that we've seen it. Motion running backs from the backfield, a little bit of eye candy to distract the defenders. Javen White does a great job keeping his eyes where they need to be on the quarterback and again the interception. That hold is going to cost UNLV about 30 yards of field position. Thomas and a good tackle there coming up from a, a safety spot is Dalen Johnson. 
Remember, Damian Baber, the senior strong safety, one of the best defensive players Nevada has, was ejected. And you can see for the second time, Gabriel Sewell is banged up. Baber was ejected for targeting in the first half, and they miss him on defense. We'll step aside a one point Nevada lead. It's an odd injury for Gabriel Sewell, number seven for Nevada in white. Right there, you're just going to see, watch the right ankle just get stepped on right there. It was actually helped off partly by his brother, which is a pretty cool scene to see. We talked about it earlier, missing Baber. And then there's his brother right there, Nephi, helping him out. I don't know if I would have helped my brother up. I would have told him to suck it up. <laughs> it's nice of him. Second down. And bouncing it outside there, Xavier Campbell. Short of the first down. Third down and two. Clock is under six minutes now. And this is one of those 30 shorts that Barney Cotton was talking to us about. They didn't convert these last week versus Hawaii, cost them the football game. Definitely helps having Armani back there at quarterback, though. Healthy, feeling good, and the threat of possibly running. Oh, high snap. And straight ahead, Rodgers is going to get the first down. Rodgers, the ball carrier. And once again, that 6-5 frame being able to catch a bad snap. The ball came in there pretty hot, high into the right from the center. Watch this catch right there. I don't know, Rich, if I was back there at quarterback, my 6-1 frame, I don't know if I'm catching that one. No, Aaron Murray would be turning and running to pick that up at the 10-yard line. Listen, I got, a, I got a good vertical, though. You know, I, could, I got some bunnies. I can jump up there and snag it. Just wouldn't have been as graceful as that. First and 10, 38-yard line. Play action, Rodgers, sideline shots and overthrows the intended receiver, Brandon Presley. Second down and 10. And the one issue the coaches want is look at the lower body locking out that left knee and not keeping a bend. You want to make sure as you step into a throw from a quarterback, you want to keep some kind of bend. That way your body's able to go through the throw. And that will increase the accuracy. But they'll have time to work with him this offseason to improve a couple things. Blitz comes, fires to the sideline, right on the money, right on time. Caught by Presley, has a first down. There's no question he is a unique athlete, this Armani Rogers guy. What, the ball's already out of his hands. You see the top of the route right there from the receiver. The ball's out about a split second before Presley comes out of it, and that's just anticipation, trust, and having a great arm to make the throw to the outside. Straight ahead on the ground. That's another seven-yard pickup, 43-yard line. If they can refine the throwing motion and add some touch, Rodgers at 6'5", 225, he has skills that 90% of college quarterbacks don't have. Yeah, he, he really does. I mean, he, he, watching him in warm-ups even a few weeks ago when we covered these guys, he wasn't playing, but just seeing him throw the football, you're like, this. he has everything you want. Is just refining a little bit things here and there, which is unfortunate why he couldn't play this entire season. Owens right to the 40-yard line, and I think he's got the first down. He does. Three yards is enough to move the chains. 3.58 left here in Las Vegas. A quick update from New York. Brent? Guys, LSU and A&M in the seventh overtime. Kellen Mond to Courtney Davis, game time touchdown. Then Mond to Kendrick Rogers for the game-winning two-point conversion. Highest scoring game in FBS history. A&M wins 74-72. Sending shockwaves, I'm sure, through Vegas. Rogers throw. Cut right at the 15. Down to the 12. Fa'olo. Giovanni went up and got it and held it, and Rodgers was right on the money. And this is the same play they scored a touchdown on earlier. Both tight ends to the left, little play action, just a double post. And a great accurate throw, and then a great catch. 
from Giovanni right there. Same play we just saw the touchdown earlier. Came back to it. And a big completion get inside the 20. Nevada. Nevada calls a timeout. They're on their heels. Armani Rogers and UNLV marching with 316 left in a rivalry game in the Mountain West. Tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Yeah, it's definitely Armani Rogers. What he's done this entire football game, fully healthy. He's exciting to watch. There's the big touchdown to the tight end. The QB sneak using a 6'5 frame. And then his ability to throw in the run tonight has been impressive. We saw that one there. We saw a couple throws going to his left. And those are tough throws to make, but he's demonstrated accuracy, arm strength, and obviously the ability to run as well. Now, if you're calling plays, if you're Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator, you're in the red zone. You're just outside the 10. I think you got to keep running the ball right here. You're running it well. The offensive line's doing a great job. Rodgers will keep it. Left side. Big man still on his feet. Now surrounded and stopped at the six-yard line. And the clock is going to dip below three. Nope. Jay Norvell hops out from the sideline, and he's going to call a timeout. Nevada, second. So after a couple of timeouts, Nevada wants to make sure if UNLV gets points that there's time left on the clock. Yeah, and that's a smart move right there. It is a big game, a lot of fun, and most importantly, the trophy. It's all about the trophy. That's that's the biggest rivalry trophy the in college football. Trophy. I mean, when we were in the coaches' offices at Nevada for the Boise State game, you and I went and tried to to budge the cannon. No luck. No. That, that is heavy. But I went back to the weight room after that pitiful performance. Got my squat game up. So I might have to run on the field afterwards and try to push it around a little bit. All right, football now sits at the six. A first down can be had at about the two. I think the same thing right now. Like I said, offensive line's doing a great job. You had a mobile quarterback. Running backs are doing well. I continue running it. On the ground, Owens. Right at the sticks, right at the two. And it's third and inches or it's first and goal, depending on the spot. And, and, and the spot is a good one for UNLV. It is first and goal now, 3.02 left. And right now, the clock is the enemy, enemy number one for Nevada at the moment. That's why Jay Norvell used that timeout the last play. And right now for UNLV, I just keep running it. Keep milking that clock. Owens in the backfield, high snap, and Owens is stuffed. And I think Nevada's gonna burn their last timeout here. They will. That's a loss of a yard. Lucas Weber and Nephi Sewell came through to make the hit. And you see all the downhill right there of the linebackers. I wouldn't be surprised if Barney Cotton saw that last play. If he saw that last play, maybe decides, hey, if we want to take a shot throwing the football, maybe once again, just like the last touchdown, a little play action to the running back, and then maybe sneak out a receiver, a tight end, somewhere in the back of the end zone because these defense is so far downhill. We know that a lot of you are joining this game from other games, and if you're just happening by, this has been a, a crazy ride in a rivalry game. Nevada has a ton of momentum. Jay Norvell's team has won four in a row, and they opened up a 23-0 lead over UNLV, who's had a miserable season at 3-8. and eight. But that man right there, Armani Rogers, playing for his coach, Tony Sanchez, has been a difference maker. And the Rebels down the point with 2.40 left in the ball game. 12th play of the drive. Rodgers, left side, leaps, and is in! Touchdown, UNLV! Look at the left side of the offensive line right here. Driving back the defensive line, putting him into the end zone. 
And that's easy work right there for Armani Rogers when the offense line's blocking that great. And they should go for two right here. They're going to call a timeout, get it together, make sure they got a great play call. Well, they get the two. They're up by seven, and so it doesn't make sense to just kick it and go up by six. And right here, I think you got to move Rodgers a little bit in the pocket somehow. Utilize his legs. We talked about the, the linebackers, the safeties, downhill with the run action. Maybe some kind of play action. Sneak someone out if no one's open. Allow Armani Rodgers do what he does best and take off and see if he can get the two-point conversion with his legs. Rodgers is out of Los Angeles. Committed to Cal, ended up at UNLV. Known as a runner, he's been terrific as a thrower and a runner tonight. So now the conversion for two to stretch it to seven. Evan Rodgers in the backfield. Deflected, incomplete, looking for Presley. Flag is down. Yeah, that's an easy call on the outside. Going to be a holding, pass interference, whatever it is. Pass interference, number 23, defense. Bills have to distance and go, replay the try. Yeah, Jamon Dotson got juked out with a slant on the inside from Presley. Understands that he's going to get beat to the outside. There's a smart thing in hold that at least gave his defense another opportunity to possibly stop this two point conversion. All right, you gain a yard and a half. Let's see if it changes the play call. Rolling to his right. Rodgers running out of room is caught and dropped. And Nevada holds on the conversion, but UNLV has a 34 29 lead. And remember, Nevada was driving, looking to add to their lead. Javen White with the pick. And then a long touchdown drive, finished by the big man, Armani Rogers. Not done yet in Vegas. Eagles is back there. Two and a half minutes left in this ball game. UNLV a 34-29 lead over Nevada. Rivalry game. They play for the Fremont Cannon. Nevada a 23-0 lead. First half seemingly on their way to a blowout win. But it changed with a defensive stop on fourth down. And that Fremont Cannon, which has been painted blue for the last two years, sits and waits till the winner goes the Cannon. We're back to Vegas after this. Two minutes, 34 seconds left in this ball game. UNLV. Has the lead by five. Nevada has the ball with no timeouts left. Ty Ganji and the Wolfpack hot from the start. A 23-0 lead. But you can see what happened since that start. Two interceptions have been key in this comeback by UNLV. And you're going to see UNLV most likely continue dropping eight. So only rushing three. Keep everything in front of them. Make that clock keep ticking away. Ganji with time on the money there on the first throw. Short of the first down, clock will roll. No timeouts, Caleb Fossum with the catch. Gain of eight, second and two. And Ganji needs to realize plenty of time. Take what the defense gives you, just keep chipping away. Again, three-man rush, short throw. Kelton Moore the catch, has the first down. Clock will stop while they move the chains. That's the perfect job right there. If the defense is going to give you five to seven, you take it. The clock's going to stop. Like I said, just keep going away. Right now, Fossum and Mannix in the slot. Look out for those two guys finding holes in the zone. First and ten. Ganji back a little deeper this time. Down the middle and caught there. 
Fossum has a first down into Rebel territory at the 48-yard line. At some point, I wonder if you know if he's going to turn up the heat a little bit on defense. If you're going to continue playing zone, they're going to find the soft spots and exploit it. Another first and ten. Time for Ganji. Swing pass out of the backfield. Moore is hit and stopped before he can get out of bounds. Clock will roll. Gain of two. Second and eight. Plenty of time. No need to rush or hurry. Get lined up. Get the play call. Try to snap in about 15 seconds or less. Second and eight. Ganji. Sideline. It's picked. Intercepted. Javen White again. Unbelievable. And UNLV can run the clock out and capture the cannon. Flag is down. After the play, unsportsmanlike line conduct, number 26, Tommy. 15 yards will take from the end of the play. Lane's first down, UNLV. That is number 26, first unsportsmanlike line conduct in the game. And what a play by Javen White going up, getting vertical, and getting his second interception in the game to seal the deal. Ty Ganji just trying to make too much happen. Defense takes advantage once again. Like he said, seals the deal. I can feel that paints are chipping away. It's gonna that trophy's gonna be red pretty soon. Do you remember what the sideline looked like at the start of this game? Oh, it was dead. Dead. The crowd was out of it. The players were out of it. The coaches were out of it. All of a sudden, get going a little bit. Armani makes a couple plays. You get an interception on defense. Defense has stepped it up. And you win one heck of a ball game. It was 23 nothing this will be the biggest comeback in UNLV history and the cannon is on the move the cannon has left the building much like Elvis here in Vegas much like the rebels who were down 23 nothing Armani Rogers the six foot five sophomore leads UNLV to an incredible comeback. And in a rivalry game, what a way to win it. Like he said, to be out, everyone's counting you out. Fans are counting you out. Make an incredible comeback. Biggest comeback in school history. That was fun to watch. That was fun to watch. Defense stepped it up. Second quarter and on. Armani Rogers, the running backs, the offensive line. Give credit to those guys up front. They did a tremendous job. But Armani Rogers, sophomore, has some stuff to work on. But I tell you what, tonight was a huge step forward. Not just running the football, but taking and throwing it as well. That's a great sign right there. Two quarterbacks battling for their team all year. Friendship and happy for, happiness for each other is awesome to see. When the Rebels get to their locker room, the cannon will be waiting. How emotional will that be? Seemingly a lost season for UNLV. 3-8 and eight coming in. Down 23-0 to their rivals. They rally at home and win it. A.J. Ross is down with Tony Sanchez. A.J.? Coach Sanchez, a lot of momentum shifts in this game. Javon White with two interceptions. Your defense stepped up big. What does this mean for this team? It's huge. It's been a tough year. You know, we came out playing so well the first four games, and we hit that six-week stretch. You know, Armani goes down. We have a bunch of injuries in the secondary. It would have been so easy for our guys to throw the towel in, but you know what? We got a bunch of really good older guys. We have some really talented young guys, and you saw the impact Armani had on the game tonight. It was unbelievable, but so proud of the 
defense. Being down 23 to nothing, you can some teams are throwing the towel and they're done. And to come back and win that game, that's huge for Rebel football. Fremont Cannon finally coming back here to the Rebel Stadium. It what is. does this mean? It's huge. You know, and the thing about it is we haven't had it a lot over the last 10, 15 years, you know, since Robinson. And our seniors go out having it 50% of the time. A lot of groups have never done that here, you know, again, since Robinson Day. So I'm proud of them. I'm just so happy for our seniors to go out with their names on a plaque. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, AJ. Nice job tonight. <laughs> wow. Just unbelievable. It's 23 0 in a rivalry game and seemingly dead in the water. And the Rebels come roaring back. What a finish here for Aaron Murray, AJ Ross, our entire CBS crew. I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, 24 hour home of CBS Sports. So long from Las Vegas, back to our New York studios. Inside college football, Brent Stover and Kevin Carter. The Rebels capture the cannon.